David with Divi hey, Chat. Everybody. Welcome. Hello, hello. All right. Do we have an affiliate uh, link for that? I don't know. We might. <laughs> We're going to talk about some some awesome stuff today. Uh, how to continue increasing your skill set to better serve your clients. Better yet, charge higher rates. Uh, before we dive off into today's topic, let's go around the panel and say hi to everybody. Uh, hey, Steph. Hi, everybody. I am feeling pretty good right now, surrounded by all these handsome fellas. Yeah, you and, are. Uh, yeah, right. I know. With all their um, quarantine haircuts and everything, or lack thereof. But uh, I'm Stephanie Hudson, as you guys mostly know, and uh, I run Focus WP, which is a white label WordPress maintenance company for busy agencies like you. And well, you can find me over at focuswp.co or um, you can email me, Stephanie at focuswpco, or you can find me in my Facebook group, which I'm at a lot of the times, which is called Focus on Your Biz, B-I-Z. And I'm super happy to be here. I think this is a cool topic. I'm going to help. Stephanie, with the people that want to reach her, it's dot co. Not what did I say? Co. You oh, left the dot sorry. out. Sorry, I didn't enunciate. At least I heard. Yeah, I was like, sorry. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate it. That. It was, it was like make a it, comma they instead get of a lost. dot. It was a comma. Yeah, it was like it was a, a semicolon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank I'm you, sorry. David. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You're so good to me, Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins. What's up, guys? I don't really know what to say right now. It's hot in here. Gotta get my air conditioner set up in the office. Quarantine, quarantine day ninety. Kids are going a little. Arizona crazy. is so hot. Well, you know, I'm in Prescott, and it's not really too hot. I mean, it's like when I complain about it being hot, it's like eighty degrees outside. Hmm. So we're not Phoenix hot, which is probably like 105 there right now. So got the got the altitude working for us here. So, anyways, happy to be here. Aspen Grove Studios, Divi Chat, and I'm excited about this topic. <laughs> Boom. Awesome. Glad you're here too, Corey. Divi Josh. dot space. <laughs> good dot enunciating. That was good. Speaking thank of you, dots, you. I'm Josh Hall. Josh, Josh, Hall <laughs> Josh, Josh Hall at I would I mixed up dot and hall. Josh Hall dot Josh co. Ho. There it is. Josh Ho. His co. new name. Josh Somebody Ho. change his name. To uh, there it is. Josh Ho. You're welcome. This is already going <laughs> off the rails. This episode. It is good to be here, though, guys. Uh, yep. So I'm Josh. Josh Ho. You can find all my WordPress tutorials and uh, my podcast is there. Uh, an additional podcast if you're interested in that, and then courses and all kinds of good stuff. Um, I will say I'm going to hang around as long as I can. I told the panel before my wife is managing two babies and cooking dinner. So, uh, I'll either leave early or you might see a baby in here at some point, but good to be with you guys. Baby. Today. I vote baby, baby. Yep. Yeah. Bring the baby. All right, Tim. Hey everybody. Tim Streifler here. And, uh, you can find me online at divilife.com All my Divi plugins, child themes, tutorials, uh, and then wpgears.com where I have my Divi business expert course with David, who is, I think that a way, a course like, you say way over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, wpgears.com for our Divi business expert course. And then timstreifler.com where my client services business is. And uh, Stephanie mentioned our, our COVID-19 haircuts, which mine's definitely really long right now. The funny thing is though, I, I normally cut my hair at home. I have a little buzzer kit. My wife buzzes. Do you have a floby? Do you have and, a floby? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Tim's, no. Tim's too young. Like, he doesn't like know what a floby is. He I'll, yeah. I'll get you one for Christmas. Tim. <laughs> He's 10 years younger than you, Corey. Than you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, super young. My long hair has nothing to do with COVID 19. But anyway, it's kind of funny. I have no excuse. I missed. I no, think I, I might have missed the punchline of that story. What was the razor? What's the buzzer thing? Well, you were you were mentioning that that we all have our COVID nineteen haircuts and my oh, long curly hair. Oh, and yours isn't. It has nothing to do with it. I just it call it a quarantine cut. But yeah, it's yeah, just, it's you're not just being a quarantine lazy. cut. It's just a lazy cut because I normally in. cut my hair at home. So yeah. yeah, it wasn't really meant to be a punchy type of joke. But <laughs> sorry, just, just say okay. just a uh, an observation, <laughs> an, an anecdote, a, cle <laughs> a clever <laughs> limerick. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my gosh oh my okay in case y'all haven't noticed 
It's we all weird. We're quarantined. all punchy tonight, I think. We may have been quarantined a tad too long by now. <laughs> may, have, may have had a few quarantinis, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, we had some quarantinis. Foreign crazy. <laughs> all right. My name is David Blackman with Aspen Grove Studios and Divi Space, WP Gears and Divi Chat. Today, we're going to talk about things you can do. Let me, let me read. It's a long title. Let me read it. How to continue increasing your skill set to better serve your clients. And the best part, charge higher rates. So we're going to talk about Ooh. some things you can do to do that and stuff. I know Stephanie has some really awesome kind of different, you know, segments. You know, you mentioned what? <laughs> blogging and what else did you mention, Stephanie? Well, I know courses. When you're talking just, about leveling up your skill set for all these different reasons, I was thinking about this today and I'm like, okay, so how can you do that? You know, the easy, the old, old school way is you go to a school, you know, you go take a class, you go to college, you do something if you want to learn. But now, I mean, that you have so many things at your disposal. So you can um, purchase online courses from people like you guys who all do that. You can um, watch free tutorials on YouTube, things like that. You can do podcasts, you can do uh, books, audiobooks or reading, you know, physical books. Um, blogs. I mean, the list is pretty long. I, I'm probably missing something. Anything you guys can think of besides that? Uh, for uh, me, consulting, I, I don't do this often, but consulting is a great way, like investing in an hour with somebody who or does consulting or any sort of training. I've done yeah. some of those things in the past and they've been extremely Getting valuable. Actual so like training. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, not yeah, anything like we can do right now, but conferences, you know, like attend a WordCamp or good one. Like that. But there are more digital, virtual. Digital yeah, virtual. Yeah, there's more. There, virtual, there's actually like a lot of WordCamps going like digital and virtual right now, which is cool to see. Hmm. I just now. spoke at a conference last week. It was a disaster. The tech completely punked me. Zoom oh, that's the worst. just crapped out. I had to restart. I had to restart twice. So my whole talk was broken into three chunks and I lost like everybody was watching. Oh, I was so mad. It's frustrating. But that's anyway. Frustrating. So I would say another form of learning. This is actually like a big way that I learn. Like I love courses. I love podcasts. I love all that stuff. But for me, a big thing is like getting in there and like getting my hands dirty. Like the way I, I like started getting really familiar with WordPress is I was just get in there and start breaking stuff. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like when you're a Good. kid, it's true. Yeah. You take apart a radio to then learn how to put it back together. I don't know if any of you guys yeah, did that. that. Yeah. That, that's the advice I give it. And it's like, don't even do it locally. Don't have it be like a client site or something, right? But have it be like a development site on a server and break it. Yeah, like a sandbox it. environment. And then break it and fix it and and, and keep doing it and play. Hey, the there's nothing quite like the pressure of breaking <laughs> a client's site and having to get it up. The, the, don't the disvalue that. Yeah, don't <laughs> that devalue is true. that. Yeah. How quick you learn something. I, I've definitely done um, that. Like uh, yeah. <laughs> now, one oh, thing yeah, we forgot yeah. is, uh, is, is I don't think we had Tim define um, continue increasing your skill set. <laughs> <laughs> What's continuing education, hey, Tim? Thanks, Corey. Good luck. Tim. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little background, not necessarily definition, but I think in the tech world, technology is constantly changing. Platforms are changing. WordPress is evolving. Divi is evolving. The languages of the web are constantly evolving, and so continuing education is super important. And it's basically just the concept of staying ahead of the curve and, and being able to continuously uh, refine your skill set uh, to make yourself more valuable uh, to, for your own business, for your clients, et cetera. And so that's kind of the basis of this topic is leveling up and, and making yourself more valuable. Boom. Okay, that? everybody. And on that. I, I, I Sorry, was I, was, I was in the <laughs> chat. Can you repeat it? <laughs> Nice. No, we're good. We're good. No repeating. No repeating, Tim. Well, let's think, let's talk about, let's kind of break down a few things of, you know, kind of what we talked about. Um, obviously, you know, you can read blog posts and, and, and educate yourself, but w what are some areas, I guess, first of all, that you may want to educate yourself on to help 
serve your clients or to be able to charge higher rates and stuff might be a good place to start. I know for me, like practically, as I'm like reflecting on my decade of web design experience, I, I was looking at the path of my learning because I am definitely all on board with continuing to level up and learn. Um, and everything we've talked about so far, whether it's books, podcasts, courses, whatever, I do all that. But practically like the subjects, it's been interesting what I've learned over the deck over the past decade. Like the first few years for me, it was all about just WordPress, uh, website design, like design things. And then it moved into more like coding and I learned CSS and more about cPanel and stuff like that. Then I learned more about business and I'm still doing all the other things along with that. And then more recently, like the past couple of years, now I'm learning more about conversions and marketing mm -hmm. strategies and stuff like that. So it's just been kind of interesting. There's a bunch of other secondary learning phases in there too, but um, that's something that's helped keep me going is like, the, those um, the stepping stones, like one step at a time, it's design, it's coding, it's business, and then it's marketing and conversions and stuff like that. So I don't know what it you really guys... is literally leveling up, like just continuing to build on what you've just learned. So that's yeah. cool. That's good. And it's not to devalue design or coding, but like it is, you know, for me, that was the path that worked out pretty well, which like now I can't wait to go back and, you know, have my company redesign a bunch of my old sites because they look pretty nice, but the verbiage is terrible or there's like no great conversion call to action. So um, right. it can also benefit you leveling up can actually help lead to more work because if you, as we're talking about serving your clients and charging higher rates, if you can build a really nice website and code and you now know conversions and marketing strategies, then you just up your hourly rate quite a bit. Um, so it's yeah. a great way to, oh. to make them. I'll tell you this morning on my way, um, I had to go drop off a tiller. On your <laughs> way to work? To go, yeah, well, I left the office to go drop off the tiller, but I decided to go get me some coffee at my favorite coffee shop. They had closed completely down, um, but now they're doing curbside pickup. They're still closed. Nice. You know, can't go in and stuff. That they're doing Mexican curbside coffee. pickup. That Mexican mocha. And I got to tell you, they make the best Mexican mocha ever anyways uh so i pull up to the curbside for them to come out and the owner of the rest of the coffee shop actually is was the person making coffee that morning and he came out and we just started talking and you know it just goes to sh to show that everything that we're talking about on divi chat i know tim and i have been doing some lives on things you can do during covid19 and we've all said that you know small businesses are going to be more interested than ever before in your services and our services. So what can we do to up our game and stuff? So as I was talking to him this morning, I can tell you right now, if I want a new client, I've got a new client because he is, he was stamping the approval of yes, business owners. It is high in their mind um, about what they can do to make money online and stuff. And I was talking with him and just sharing knowledge with him about what he can do, you know, to help get his, you know, more, um, let more people know besides just the website. Cause he put on his website, you know, Hey, curbside pickup. Well, that's great. If you're a dedicated loyal fan like me and right. who's dying for a Mexican mocha. But my first question to him was, Hey, do you, do any type of user acquisition? Do you have an email list? You know, can you let these people know that you're serving coffee curbside now? You know, um, because as a community, we want to support businesses. We want to help. You know, we we where we may not go out for coffee every day or you know eat out as much. I think more people are now to support their local businesses to try to help them stay afloat. And and he had mentioned that he had a prudent reserve of funds and tried to keep employees on staff and it just ran out like that when there was no money coming in. So I do think, you know, this is, this is a perfect topic. So marketing, Josh talked about marketing, email marketing, content marketing, you know, he had obviously been doing some research cause it was fresh in his mind. I don't even know what to, what to content market about to get people to my business and stuff, you know, well, us as web developers and stuff we do it's it's top of mind for us because we're used to doing it on a daily basis at least we are and stuff so 
I feel like I'm talking all the time. <laughs> you yeah, are. I, I feel this... like there's there's kind of like two different paths of learning and education. Like, for example, like there's more informal learning, which is kind of just always being in a state of learning. You're listening to podcasts, you're reading blog posts, you're you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, it's the, like, and then part of that's kind of like the learn as you go method, which is like a lot of my web design journey. It's like, hey, I need to learn how to do this. Google this, watch a video. When okay, a client asks do you, do, can you do this? And you say, yes. Yeah, exactly. And then you go and figure it out later. Figure so out how to I, do it, yeah. I feel like that's kind of like the informal learning. And then there's like the formal learning, which is like courses or college and stuff like that, where it's like you're paying for a structured like uh, curriculum or, you know, a structured course with, you know, all the different modules planned out and stuff like that. Because, and I'm not saying one's better than the other by any means. I think it's just part of it is, you know, maybe... It, when you want to level up, you kind of go that informal route, or I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you go the formal route so that you can level up opposed to the informal learning is like a little here, a little there type of approach. Um, and so, so yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of thinking about like those two different avenues and how um, going the formal route is usually a more intentional conscious decision to like, Hey, I need to level up. I want to learn X. I want to learn Y. I want to learn Z. And you, you, you purchase something, you obtain something to help you get there opposed to like just taking bits and pieces from, from here and there. Cause I feel like I did a lot of the more informal learning and it's like, I'll learn this one thing. And if I would have known the other thing over here, then it would have saved me a lot of time later down the road. And then later I circle back to it and say, okay, that's why I screwed that up is because I didn't know that one crucial piece of information. So I guess all of that to say, I feel like there's value in more of that formal type of, of education um, because it can basically, because it's more planned out and structured. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of started okay. talking, didn't really know the direction I want to go, but I wanted to well, talk about it's those a good, two we got there. Yeah, It's a good point because there, there's value in both and I do a mix of both. However, the more I valued my time, I'm on the same boat. You, knew, you said that, Tim, it saves you time. It's like- yeah. So I took, I invested $700 in a podcasting course, which probably sounds crazy because I could, I'm a techie guy. I could figure out how to do a podcast, but I didn't know all the best practices. I didn't know how to really launch it. I didn't know how to technically, a lot of stuff I could figure out, but it would be nice to be guided through that. More importantly, I didn't know about the marketing strategies or how to plan ahead. And I will say every cent that I invested in that course, I have no regrets because my podcast now is like the number one conversion tool for my courses. And awesome. it was because I invested a lot in a course that got me from point A to point B. Now I could have looked at free tutorials online and spent, you know, 40, 50 hours, but the fact that I was able to condense all that learning in two days and then have my pod, I had my podcast ready to go 20 days after I went through the course. And that's another big thing. If you're doing formal courses and you're going to pay for it, I really recommend investing in something while you're doing it. That way you don't you know, waste your, your time or have to come back to it. Um, so that's, that's one thing that's really helped me. That's just a practical example of how absolutely, you know, investing in that formal path really helped me like night yeah. and day. I, I think I think you need to have um, you know a couple of things. You need to have a, a clear path of of where you want to get. But you also need to strike a balance between like something that you're like interested in and you find fun. So us as you know as we think about our uh, web designer web developer uh, journey, we started off you know towards the bottom and and learning, and it's taken us all all different routes. Um, as you know, as you go freelance and you have clients and they're requesting different things of you. You know, you're like, okay, now you want SEO. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to outsource SEO. Maybe some people that might sound, you know, like SEO is is exciting and and fun. <laughs> a, a lot of us, it doesn't sound fun at all, and we're happy outsourcing it. Um, other clients uh, might ask us about, uh, you know, doing some more custom development that involves PHP and JavaScript. Some people find that exciting, and they and they and they follow that path. But you need to have some kind of clear path of like where you want to get and not 100% just do things like, you know, willy nilly, um, you know, take all these random courses. If you're, you know, your business is, is WordPress development and design and you love it, you love the community, you know, you might not want to just go sign up for some like big, like Python coding course or something like that. That's really not going to, um, you know, help you all that much uh, in, in WordPress development. So I, I, I think, you know, of everybody I've talked to, it's kind of like, you know, their personality, 
and maybe what the skill set is that you know that they didn't know about and what they find exciting that kind of takes them to that to that next level whether it's marketing or you know getting more into development skills or seo i have a a good question for y'all what do you feel would be the best thing that you could learn to help your clients the most do you think it's building websites do you think it's marketing their business getting them found online conversion what is it exactly do you feel like would be one of the most important things that if somebody had to choose one thing you know one thing to do what would you guys say would be the one thing that you would recommend that they do uh, that would most help serve their clients better I, I think if you're designing sites and you don't have a whole team behind you you absolutely need to learn more about marketing and conversion and what the method is behind like what you're doing, you know, in, instead of just making, making something look pretty, which isn't the most important ultimately. I think it depends on what your skill set and your natural, te- um, your natural desires are. Cause you can learn, you know, I could learn accounting. I could learn how to do it, but that isn't ever going to be my path. You know, like that's never going to be for me. I would be miserable doing that. So I think you also have to focus on what you already know. Like, this is where I am and this is where I want to be. What are the steps to get there? And like, um, you have to focus on (laughs) WP. Exactly. Well, what I'm specifically meaning is designing websites. So if you want to design a website, I'm talking, no, I'm talking about that has to do with building websites for clients, not CSS, you know, outside of stuff. This would be, you know, okay. Um, I wasn't, I don't, I missed if you said that I think CSS, that would be my thing. Like, cause you can go and get Divi or something like that, that you can monkey things around a good bit. I mean, I'm, I don't, I still to this day, I'm not really much of a like JavaScript or anything like that. Like, I don't think you really need to know PHP at this point. You don't really need to know those things, but if you can't do CSS, then all you're ever going to have is out of the box templates that are just tweaked a bit. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Hey David, I missed the, I missed the question at first. What was, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I'm like really late to the party. Well, no, the question is, is if you could only learn one thing to help your clients, you're a web designer. And you could learn one thing. What would be the one thing that you think would be most important that could benefit your clients the most? So I'm going to answer. I'll answer last. I'll let y'all kind of answer first. And yeah. Stuff, so Stephanie I'm... said CSS. Um, and while I think that's important for me, I think if it ter- comes to the value that it would bring my clients, I would be more along the lines answer kind of what Corey said, talking about more like conversion and stuff like that. So I think general marketing, because so many clients think that they just need a really good website. They just need to have a, a great web presence, but like, that's, that's the easy part, getting traffic and getting that traffic to convert. That's, that's the hard part. And so you can build them the best looking website with the most fancy CSS and, uh, you know, the most fancy functionality that you custom coded or whatever, but if the whole goal is to bring value to them, then learning how to actually get, get them traffic and get that traffic to convert is, is in my opinion, most important. It is so tricky because they both feed each other. Like, it, you know, like if you have a beautiful website that gets no traffic, it defeats the purpose. But if you have a, a website that gets a lot of traffic, but looks terrible, like Tim, you just said, then yeah, that they are not getting any conversions. Um, that's definitely a tricky one. I, man, go ahead, David. I, I really don't know. I, I, I'd rather, I'd rather have a know. mediocre. Well, here, here's, that, that converts, you yeah. Know? yeah. Same. yeah same our, our friend here's... SJ is in the chat tonight. He says the most important thing you can learn is to how to talk about techie things in a non techie way. Is that what we're doing? Are we doing that? I feel a- like SJ, I'm SJ, is, the, SJ is the master of that. Yeah. Here's, here's my response to it. Okay. Um, obviously we're building websites for clients. So we have a basic understanding of how to build a WordPress website. Um, I think the most important thing for my clients is, are they getting clients? You know, so um, I, I think that's huge. I think return on investment is very, very important. So if I, if I, if I know how to build a website and I can, I guess, 
kind of like these guys say, even if it's not the greatest website, I think site structure and conversion is really important. And it, and that depends on the type of business that it is and what their goals are. So um, being able to take a small businesses or, or any business, a large business is, you know, what they are doing as a business and help them learn how to convert customers online, in my opinion, which is probably leans more towards the marketing side of things. Um, but if you're a e-commerce expert, for example, and you're focusing in your niche and WooCommerce is your thing, then guess what? You need to be a guru at WooCommerce, you know, first, first things first, be a guru at the niche that you're in. Uh, if you're kind of like probably most of us are, which are web developers, and we're not going to turn down any clients, no matter what the niche is, if they, you know, want us to build them a website, then I think the next most important thing is to, is to help them get customers and, and convert whatever that looks like. So, and it's different That's for a, different industries. Yeah. That, so, I think that's a yeah. good point kind of stepping stone on all that because different clients, I mean, every site should look nice and design is super important, but every site should also have good content and good conversions and basics of SEO as well. So I would say like, maybe you structure your learning depending on the project. Like if it is an established business that just has a terrible looking site, but they have a lot of current clients, then design may be one of the most important thing to help with conversions because it actually just aesthetically needs to look nicer. Whereas if there's a startup or a business that has zero web presence, then potentially content and the basics of SEO may trump the design aspect because you really need to make Google happy and build a more solid web presence and structure with content um, that is maybe a little bit more important, important than design at that point. So yeah, it might just depend on the situation. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, the yeah. site, the site has to look like, you know, respectable. It can't be, uh, you know, some, some trashy looking site. It, it's like, it's like a grocery store, right? The grocery store has to have a nice, uh, front front face. It has to be clean, but you know, they also lay it out for conversion. You know, they, they put the, you know, the candy bars and stuff at the checkout and the essential items in the back. Everything at eye level, the expensive yeah, stuff so at eye level. It's, it's definitely a combination of, of both. You know, and I will say, I'll give you a little free tidbit from my website design course. And that is that images and, and graphics intrigue and entice people, but words sell. That's why a lot of mm -hmm. word-based emails are more popular than ever because that's what's actually converting and selling. So there needs to be a big emphasis on the copy and the content for sure. So and, and, story. And, and, and copywriting is one of those things that's like harder to learn. Oh, uh, it because, really is. Uh, you know, some people just have a way easier, easier time of like writing. I personally have always, you know, been a decent writer and, and, and can kind of, you know, get through copywriting, the copywriting process, but some people have such a hard time and it's just the way that our brains are wired. I mean, I'm like super terrible at math. I'm dreading for when my son gets into like third grade and has long division problems. Right. But, you know, <laughs> um, but, you know, writing, spelling, everything like that has always come like super easy to me, but everybody's wired differently, you know? Yeah. And, uh, marketing copy is, is even different than yeah. like blogging writing yeah. um yeah it's it's, it's and cool. just in website page content that's different okay. than blogging so yeah it's like there's a, there's a lot of different layers of it as well yeah. so let's say regardless of whichever thing we've decided that you want to learn how do you figure out where to go who do you trust to teach you who do you where do you go you go to, to level up wp gears and josh hall that's a great question, <laughs> question Stephanie. Well, you know, yeah that, but i mean but i mean why would somebody go to your so site no and i'm not talking I, about your marketing things i'm like you know people go to you guys because they've been following you they know you they trust you they know like and trust you tim but it is a great question like but I, what I what like, but besides that like what if somebody wanted to learn copywriting none of you guys have a copywriting course like how do you find yet. someone <laughs> we're, not, we're not working on one <laughs> how do you find i'm actually writing one right now <laughs> how do you find those sources i would i i would first go with who you know like and trust however you do it whether it's a podcast episode or um you could do it through courses but because uh, you'll often like i'm sure i'm not alone like i put the majority of my resources in my courses like the really in-depth stuff um so you'll get a lot out of that but 
I, I mean, shoot, honestly, Steph, like reaching out to somebody to say like, Hey, first of all, your trusted network. Like I'm looking to learn more about copywriting. Do you guys know somebody you trust in this field or you like in this mm-hmm. field? That's probably where yeah. I'd start. And then also just kind of listen out. Like if, for example, if WP Gears has a podcast episode on copywriting, I would take the fir- the informal route and listen to some free resources or watch some tutorials on yeah. that and then take the next step and find out what might be a good fit. Yeah. And I feel like before you can even decide who to go with and, and where to, you know, invest into a course, I feel like the first decision is, do you try to go to YouTube or do you try to go, you know, podcast informal route or like make the decision to actually put some of your hard earned money, invest in yourself into a course. And so I, I, I think that's kind of like the first step in the first decision. And not that that's always the right choice for everyone every time, but I think there's, or not, I think there is a psychological thing when you actually put money into something, you're more likely to complete it. You're more likely to actually uh, follow through because uh, you, you paid value. You, you, you had to give something in order to get it opposed to just YouTube videos. You might find the perfect YouTube video that tells you everything you need to know, but because it's free, you're less likely to actually take action and do something with it. Um, uh, there's a, a marketer that I follow a lot and he, he has big mastermind, uh, memberships and people literally pay 25 grand a year to join and be a part of his mastermind because they see a return on their investment. And so he had like a friend of a friend that like reached out and wanted to learn internet marketing and stuff like that. And so he let him come and, and join and be a part of it for free. He waived the $25,000, uh, fee. Well, this guy, he showed up, but he wasn't really present. He wasn't engaged because he got it for free. It had no value to him. But the people that were there that spent $25,000 to get access to this like gold information, like they were the ones that were actually applying it and, and, and taking action with it. And I think the same goes with courses. When you actually do fork up some money and, and invest in yourself, you're more likely to actually do something with it than just trying to like spin your wheels, trying to get stuff for, for free. So that, that's kind of yeah. my and, argument for paid courses, I guess. Or you could be like Steph and pay a thousand dollars for a course and then never finish it. Yeah, that, that happens too. And I have another story. <laughs> <to that. laughs> it well, like, it, oh. The one thing I noticed is like, you know, there's a lot of great free stuff out there and there's like, you know, code Academy and, and different resources like that. Lynda.com. Somebody mentioned yeah, in Lynda.com, Facebook chat. Lynda.com is better. I mean, cause I, I, I mean, they do offer from time to time free stuff, but like, like code Academy, you can go to, and you can go through all these like CSS lessons and JavaScript lessons. They show you the code, but they don't show you like how to execute it, like into uh, like a real, you know, web situation. Right. Like they're not going to tell you like, you know, in CSS, uh, you, you get a web to, situation, you know, you this, yeah, a web situation in a, uh, you know, in a style that CSS file, or they don't show you, mm-hmm. you know, how you can progress in like SCSS JavaScript. They don't go into like dot JS files and creating child themes and things like that. So yes, you can go to a code Academy and you can learn CSS, you know, until you're, you know, blue in the face and exhausted and, and learn all, you know, some of the principles of how CSS works but it doesn't show you how it actually like applies right to, to a website and some of the premium stuff they you know they're showing you like real world examples and uh live examples on websites and and things like that so to me that's for, for my years of like doing both has been the, the big difference you yeah. know one of my uh one of my web design students shout out adela who talked about this on the podcast episode i did with her she said that she followed me for months with my free Divi tutorials on YouTube and, you know, got a lot of value from them, but she just never felt comfortable still with CSS. She always felt like an imposter and she was still breaking stuff. And she gave me the best analogy. It was like the free tutorials were like breadcrumbs. But when she finally invested in the course, she said that was like the meal that was like start to finish. Like, oh, now I get it. Like it put all the puzzle pieces together. And well, I'm mixing analogies together now, but like that, you know, like that was the <laughs> put full, all the puzzle pieces together the, and ate the it. bread, the bread, the bread crumb 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 puzzle. Yeah, the bread. Bread. <laughs> the puzzle turned out to be you take my course, puzzle. Puzzle. <laughs> take my courses, and you will put puzzle pieces with bread, and it will work oh, out. Great. No, that but is... that was it was a great analogy. Like that was it was a good way to 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 frame that up because there is a lot a of there's a lot of times where free information and podcasts and stuff is great. 
Uh, but it's often not enough. It's just a bite-sized sample of a much larger. Yeah, and a lot of yeah. times it's like lead you into the, the premium content. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's right. people who know, what, they know what they're doing and they put, they put out the breadcrumbs to, to, you know, yeah, it is to lead you into the premium. And, content. and I, th I think too, the, the big part that's missing from some of those like bite-sized chunks as we're talking about is the story and the why. And so being able to actually connect like core, like in Corey's example, the code, it's like, yeah, you, here's the code, but it's like, if you don't have like, understand the why and why that's the case, and you don't understand the big picture and how it fits into the grand scheme of things like Corey, then you're not going to get it. Like in mine and David's business course, we could just give you here's, here's the steps of here's how you go get your first client. But like, that's not going to really teach someone opposed to being able to actually like learn the, the backstory of why that works and the psychology mm -hmm. behind it. And here's this and that, and here's, you know, 10 examples of, of how we use this in a real world scenario. Then it starts to click opposed to just, here's a couple of steps. And so like, I think that's a big thing is the why and the story, like our big components of how people really learn and how it actually can sink in. Pa I, I said Pablo sink in, but really it's more like sink in. Yeah. Pablo just won the chat tonight because he said, Never take a baking course from Josh Hall. <laughs> There'll be puzzle pieces in it. How do you know, man? Josh may be a good baker. You never know. I, I no, agree with all of this, and I don't. I think it just depends on the situation because I, I have many times gone to the CSS Tricks website to learn things about like Flexbox or things like that that I don't really like that I didn't really have a solid grasp on or some other random thing I needed to do. And I, I didn't need to go take a whole CSS course. I under, I know CSS and I know how to implement it, but to go, um, to take it to the next, just to like take <laughs> like mini level ups. So like you guys are all saying stuff in the chat. I could already tell. Sorry. Josh, <laughs> Josh Wasn't it Josh, Josh Hole? <laughs> I, I, I put I put Josh uh, Ho dot Cole. <laughs> yeah, Josh, that's my that's my Friday night website I'm working on. Yeah. Hey, uh, so I, um, I want to I want to give a big shout out to our Facebook watchers. Obviously, we're streaming to Facebook Live, and we've got some conversation going over there. And Loren um, Scott I, I says that Scott over Scott, there. Scott says that he uses lynda.com. It, it's been very helpful to him. And obviously lynda.com is a huge learning platform. There are a lot of free resources and free courses on lynda.com as well as paid and stuff. So uh, yeah, lynda.com is a great resource. Hey, I have really a question. By the way, could... by the way, to, I want to answer Stephanie's question. Oh yeah. Because it pertains to lynda.com. Your, your question before was I want a copywriting course. Oh, we sent we sent our um, copywriters. I didn't really want to copy to lynda.com. So I know I'm just I'm just giving you an example. We sent our copywriters to lynda.com and they took some copywriting courses and stuff. And, and it, it was really, really helpful. and stuff. So, yeah, it did. So I'm giving a shout out to lynda.com. Now we have a yeah. premium. We have a premium account. So it's it was paid of courses. You we could, Thanks, we Mom. could go through and stuff. Thanks, I'm Mom. curious, uh, <laughs> since we're talking about like some practical things that we can do that everyone else could do as well to help better serve our clients and charge, you know, higher rates. What's something that you guys have learned or implemented that helps with that? Because I've got a few things that really help take me to that next level from like 45 an hour to 75 an hour. Um, and now I'm above that. Like, I'm curious, like what maybe you guys learned that really help you get, you know, past that level to a higher level. Just walking through the fear of raising your rates, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Just all saying, hey, I'm all about you know, that, man. Building websites, period, is a skill set, and you should be charging. I guess question premium. maybe yeah. maybe rephrase that question as to like what what's something you learned that gave you the confidence to do that? Because once I got really good at for me, it was CSS. Once I learned CSS, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, I am much more valuable than what I'm doing. I'm a god. I'm legit. And then, <laughs> I'm legit. Yeah, I was legit. Yeah. And then once I learned the conversion based stuff and the importance, the like the foundational stuff of SEO, that's when I went from like 75 to 95. Um, so I just, I asked that to like, ask you guys, were there any stepping stones for you that you learned that really helped you? Cause that could be a practical place to start for people. Yeah. I, I, I think Absolutely. just methodology and being able to explain your, your process and what you're doing and, and why you're doing it. And, and part of that is, you know, that, that borderline, uh, understanding of, of SEO and, and website building CSS for me was definitely a, a huge, uh, 
confidence booster and, you know, lift, uh, you know, up to where I did feel more comfortable raising my rates, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of PHP. Now there's another thing that we're not thinking of, right? We take on a project and we we bid this out at whatever our hourly rate is. And that's $75 an hour. Now, if, if you don't have the entire skill set that it takes to complete that project, you're going to have to like outsource some of that. So that's taking away, uh, you know, some of the money that you could have kept for yourself. If, if you did have those skills, if you did have those kind of more baseline, uh, or even more advanced PHP skills, for example, and you don't have to outsource it and pay pay somebody else. So there's there's all kinds of different ways to to kind of think about that. At you could go time, either way on that too, though, because you can't take on any extra projects if yeah, you're doing every single yeah. thing. Yeah. At the same time, I'm I'm also an advocate of like outsourcing stuff that maybe you're not an delegation. Expert in, yeah. And that's going to take I, uh, twice as long as somebody sorry. else. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was also uh, thinking about delegation when it comes to education. Um, I have a lot of contractors I work with, I don't, I'm not one of these, um, marketers that wants to do every single thing myself. I like outsourcing. I like running a team, but it is, um, like when you talk about, you know, like the web build, um, social media, maybe the branding, the graphics, all of those things, I feel like I have at least a base knowledge of and a skill set there. Even if I'm not the best, I'm going to hire I'll hire somebody who's the best or better suited for it. But when it comes to things like SEO or other things like that that I don't understand, it's very difficult for me. I, it makes me feel nervous running a project because you I mean, yeah, you can outsource it, but how do you know who to outsource? It? You know, even if somebody you have a relationship with them or whatever, you still have to and to be able to bid your project and to be able to do all stuff. So I try and always have like little, at least mini levels up, you know, oh, like yeah. mini level ups so that I can at least be knowledgeable enough to run a team doing certain things. I don't know. Do you guys feel that same way? And yeah. That's totally that's agree. A skill in and of itself is, uh, is oh. outsourcing and running a team. I mean, that's, it is. that's another, yeah, it's, it's it, just delegation and, and management. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of being an entrepreneur is be, being able to wear different hats and, and, and that sort of thing. But then also uh, like being able to understand things from a conceptual standpoint. And I think that's kind of what you're saying, Stephanie, because like, it's like, I, I'm, I am not a programmer. I'm not going to go and write code from scratch. However, I understand what's happening. I understand what languages uh, need to, it needs to be written in in order to accomplish the goal. So I can go and I can delegate and I can manage a developer because I have that understanding, but I'm not able to actually go in and write that code myself. And same thing with SEO. Right. It's like, I may or may not have a certain level of knowledge to be able to go do those steps, but I know enough to be able to find the right person to manage that person and to uh, be able to sell that to the client as well. And so I, I think that's a huge, uh, really important point that you brought up, Stephanie, is, is being able to have at least a base level of knowledge. And it's kind of like having a, um, shoot, what's the analogy? Like having a, is it about breadcrumbs or anything? No, it was, it was going to be about oceans. Um, oh, so, oh wow. I can't well, remember. Having so you a, have to start over. I could probably help you, Tim, but you're well, having a, a, a wide, but narrow Cast, yeah, casting a wide net. Wide yeah. Net. So it's like, you might yeah, not have yeah. a super, super deep level of knowledge with everything, but your knowledge is very wide and covers a, a large array of topics. And you Should might not- Should have a course on it analogies. Is. There we yeah. go. What if you're deep, what if you're deep <laughs> and wide, Tim? If you're Does deep and wide- Does that mean you quad, charge quadruple? That's when you reach guru level status and that's where you can <laughs> sell a course on it. That's right. Because, and it's a great point though, because like I know my mentality shifted when I started scaling my business. And up until that point, till the beginning of 2018, I was very focused on design and CSS. That was- pretty much all I focused on. And then once Jonathan, my lead designer came in and he started taking over that, I really transitioned unintentionally to marketing, copy, sales, onboarding processes and all that stuff. And that's when our business really started to boom because I focused on that while I didn't have to focus on the design and, and that stuff. I have a good, you know, I, I'm good, very good with CSS, but he's better than me now because he knows the really advanced stuff that I don't even know. And you're in it all. But. He's in it all the time. Yeah. And he's in it. But it's cool about that is I can get like, I can check in with him and he gives me kind of the updates on new stuff that he's finding out. So it really is a win-win. Now, not everyone's going to scale quite yet, but that same idea can apply no matter where you are. Like you can, you can have a good basis knowledge of everything. Well, you can do some of that with free stuff. Ideally, you know, pay premium courses from people, you know, like, and trust. 
And then once you're ready to take a certain area to the next level, you can dive into that. You know, the really cool thing about that too is like, I know learning can be really daunting. And the reason that is, is because most everybody wants to learn themselves and they want to learn for free. Well, that's why it's so daunting. You could actually go through a lot of courses in a couple weeks. Uh, most, I mean, most courses, even robust ones are, aren't going to be over a handful of hours, 10, 15 hours max. And you could do that in a couple of days. So um, I would just encourage everyone to really think about that. It doesn't have to be this long, daunting years kind of thing. You can actually learn pretty quickly. Yeah, I, um, uh, she said she'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Actually, that's BRB. pretty good. <laughs> BRB. Should just that's have a, pretty have, awesome. Actually, have one of those like little logo things of a, of a that's rest, probably rest built symbol. into Zoom. And Stephanie is so damn smart because she educated herself to use no, that. Whatever. I made go. that myself. Picture, in, right? I made you that did? myself in Illustrator. Yeah. Oh, you that, are a badass. That, that I want it. Like a lot of, that share seems like it. a lot of work. You could have gone to like Google Images and, you know, found something. And stolen it. <laughs> just just outsource it. Uh, Josh, <laughs> I want to answer your question. Your original question is when did you, you know, know when to raise your rates and stuff? And I'd like to kind of chime in. I personally feel that you should be raising your rates every year. Always. At least once a year. You should be doing that every year, regardless. By how of much? How much do you raise them? $100. This is uh, I, well, I'm a, I'm, this is a whole nother I'm, topic, I'm which I, let's not go off the rails on this because I want to do this as a topic yeah. coming up yeah, soon, right. pricing. Yeah, I I think that, you know, um, I would say if I had my guts telling me 20 percent, you know, right. Off the I top always of my say head. whatever the top the top of that next what I call price bucket. So if you're at 45, you could probably do about 65 around, or maybe even 50, well, ideally over 55, but whatever that same price bucket, like the top of that tier, um, that's what I recommend doing. Cause you can just do it. Like that's a good, that's a, probably a good thing right there. As far as percentage wise goes, David, I, I would agree with that 20 ish. Yeah. 20 ish annually. I, I, now we didn't do that. Corey and I, I mean, we like doubled, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, we went from, my, my honest answer to your question, Stephanie, is whatever you feel confident enough charging. If you feel like your work, your services are worth $500 an hour and you can get it, charge it. Charge 550. You know? Always go a little more. You know? Yeah. I mean, if, if, <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're knowledgeable and you're going to do something in like half the amount of time that somebody else might do, I mean, you know, why not have your hourly rates reflect that? There's also a lot of other factors that, that come in, which Stephanie's right. That's a whole other episode. Uh, necessity, yeah. if you're a freelancer, is one. If you're working 60 hours a week and only charging $25 an hour, busting out websites, and you're barely paying the bills, that, that's an indication that you need to, to raise your rate. So I think there's all kinds of very Yeah, I, I think demand is a big part of that too. I don't know if you specifically said that, but for me, it was always like, it wasn't necessarily when I like leveled up a certain skill set. Part of it was like when I like had a, a really big project and I felt like my ex having that experience in my portfolio made me more valuable, but then also the demand part of it where I, I'm getting so much inbound referrals and stuff like that, where I can only take on a certain amount. So now my time's more valuable. And so therefore I can charge more. And so like, and then even now, because my focus is on products and courses, I do a little bit of client work still keep my skills sharp, but that makes my time even more valuable and have to be more selective. Therefore I raise my rates to, uh, to accommodate that. So I think, demand is a big part of, of so your, rates too. your portfolio is kind of the 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 outward demonstration of your skill set then so mm -hmm. as you're learning and doing things then that goes into your portfolio so this is all ties into this education thing too right so that's how you're able to show and prove to people who are just finding you that even if they don't know you already right that you can do these things so i think it is kind of all tied together as you were saying yeah that time. You yeah. know, one, one thing I thought about early on that I completely forgot about, I want to make sure I mention it as just a strategy for, for learning more in a, in a kind of different way is to host a webinar or some sort of training. Now you don't, I would say like host a workshop or something, but you don't have to do that. Obviously we can't right now, but you can do like a one hour training with somebody else who knows more in that field and you can mm -hmm. learn a lot 
from them. I'm doing that. Interview in my people SEO. who are smarter than you. Yeah. Yes. I'm doing that part of my SEO course. I'm doing a couple of case studies with like SEO experts. I just recorded one today and I learned like a ton from this dude just in one hour. So yeah. that's it. So you could do it's the same thing idea. and it can be a win, win, win. It's a win for you. It's a win for your guest who gets exposure. Well, not, maybe not exposure, but uh, hopefully gets more Don't work out of it. Yourself. And it's a win for I'm going to interview all of you It's a win for your clients too. It's a win for your clients if they learn something. So just something I want to throw out there. SJ brings up a really good point, I think, in the chat. Uh, He talks about tie it to our, he ties it to ROI. You know, there's different ways that you can, this goes back to Stephanie's pricing, which will, we've done a pricing episode in the past. I know, we need another one. It's been a few, it's been a few years and I actually think it would probably be good, but um you know, he says to tie it to, you know, re- return on investment. How much money can the client make on the back of your work you do? Absolutely. You know, somebody's making millions value of dollars. Pricing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Getting into value-based pricing. Exposure. How much exposure? Is <laughs> How much exposure? <laughs> can what does that <laughs> Tastefully yeah. done. Value-based pricing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you have to be a very good salesperson. Do not go down this pricing road. Come on, let's go keep with, talking. To go about. with value-based pricing. He can't I tried to get us back on way. track, Steph. I tried. I know. I tried thank you. This. David no, doesn't okay. care. This yeah. is continuing. I want to. Yeah. It's almost. Well, I think it ties into it. You know, it does. It, ties it definitely into does. It. It's almost when you learn over. And I have like the one thing we have not talked about that has been super helpful to me is books. We yes. are in 2020 and everything is online and all this stuff, but like reading books has helped me so much. Uh, like, Do you read books, Steph? I'm you listen sorry. Books? I'm sorry. I read them with my ears. Ah, I listen okay. to audiobooks. <laughs> I like audiobooks, but that's still called reading them. You're still reading them, right? Actually, no? I want to do a separate oh, episode so on perfect. why audiobooks are not reading. It's actually listening. There's some scientific uh-huh. stuff behind that. Yeah, books, yeah to there me, is. books to me are for like more like methodology type stuff, like maybe like, you know, business or management type skills. I, I've never had an easy time like picking up a book like on css or on Java. no i i never buy a print book like that because i feel like it's just going to be outdated by the time it hits the shelf anyway like stuff changes so fast business book or something like that you know that that's yeah i totally agree though honestly step though yeah books changed everything that's actually if i could answer my own question Sure. Uh, apart from the conversion, because <laughs> what led to the conversions was books. Like I read books about like timeless marketing strategies and stuff over the past few years that have been invaluable to me. Um, I mean, like and- building a story, how to build a story brand. Building story like, brand is one of the ones I, yep, a big proponent of that. Disney, uh, um, there's so rework, many out there. A couple of the books from Basecamp, uh-huh. um, Built to Sell by John Werrilow. Really recommend reading that book. It'll teach you how to productize your service, even if you don't want to sell your business yet. Uh, I actually implemented a lot from that book and saw our prices, like our revenue increase dramatically after. So yeah. Which yeah, one was that? Built to Sell. It's a fun read too. It's really, oh. it's a short, fun I've heard read. of that one, of course. Uh, the it's other great. one that I've really learned a lot from is Profit First. Yes. And mm-hmm. that one is super like actionable and it teaches you how to do a thing, right? It teaches yeah. you how to change something in your business. And, but that one, I had the audio book and I was like two chapters in and I was like, I got to look at it. I got to look at it. I went yes, and bought the that's, print book. Yes. I think I've only done that twice. I'm trying to think what the other book Oh, profit it was second. It was the follow up to that profit, profit second. second environmental was, yeah. sustainability. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I read I was, it. I was going to say, Stephanie, it's yeah. like your earlobe your ver- your, your versus <laughs> yeah. your frontal lobe, right? Uh huh. <laughs> Both. It's a lobe versus lobe situation. <laughs> I'm going to write have my Lisa Loeb glasses on for any other 90s Lisa kids. Loeb. I'm going to write a book, is. a no, hard it's... copy book. <laughs> It'll be in both paperback as well as hardback. Then it's not a hard copy book if it's in paperback. It'll be both. Okay. On how to divvy. How to so. divvy. How Te- to divvy. Te- teach, me how to, teach me how to divvy. <laughs> teach me how to divvy. <laughs> By the time it hit the shelf, wish- the new version of divvy will completely make I it need, up. I need to learn how to monitor YouTube chat, Facebook chat. Facebook chat. chat and this, listen, I know. Listen to you guys. 
And Does anybody else's brain feel like it's going to explode when you start looking at all I the chats? There's, there's like a there's like a product opportunity to opportunity there to like combine the chats. Into one, put like them all in the same thing. Oh, Seth Godin. Seth e. G. Um, yeah, he's good. SJ so, permission some... permission marketing was a book by him. Was another. How can one SJ post links in this group? That's what I want to know. He's he's a moderator. Moderator. He's yeah. blue. He's his blue. original. He's an OG. He is he's a Dibby Chat OG. Am I blue? <laughs> I don't think I'm here. blue. You're not a moderator, Steph. DCOG. Oh, maybe. Hey guys, I hear some babies crying, uh, so I'm probably <gasps> gonna need to. I'm gonna need to jet here. I know. I can't believe it's already six here. I'm yeah, don't time. bring him on a Divi chat after crying. We don't want any of that. Over the ears. Uh, yeah. Can I? Can I leave with a parting thought by chance? Go no, for okay it. It's okay by just me. I was just gonna say, just prioritize your learning. Like there, there's. It can be very overwhelming. Um, there's free versus premium methods of learning. But I would just say like, whatever you're to SJ's point, whatever you're going to get the biggest return on investment in a short time, do that. Like if, if you feel like you really want to learn CSS, you know, in the next couple of months, learn CSS and then transition to marketing. Don't do everything at once. Cause it's just, you're going to overwhelm yourself if you try to do everything. And the worst thing you can do is take a little bite size of every, like a hundred different topics. Then you're not going to get anywhere. I found it better to just dive into something point A to point B, one topic, get a good grasp of it, then move on. Uh, that's kind of what I'm rolling with in my life. So just wanted to pass that on. Love it. I like it. All right, guys. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I got to bail, but it was great ch chatting tonight, and I'll see everybody here soon. All right. Joshho.co. Peace out. All right, guys. Josh Ho. Joshho.co. Go go find him at Joshho.co. Get that right. Joshho.co. I see how much I'm going to leave that, I'm gonna to leave that, that there. Yep. <laughs> Cheers, guys. He's like, oh, too. Bye, Josh. <laughs> See you, Josh. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, type something. Oh, there you are. You're I blue, did. damn it. You're blue. All right, good. You're blue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, now that Josh um, left, it's like took our, the air out of the whole thing. Our faces are bigger now. Yeah, I, I was just <laughs> admiring everyone a little bit bigger and more. Yeah, you, guys, you guys are looking good today. I gotta tell you. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> thank great. you. Thank you. I try. I'm trying. I know. Tim well, and David is... with their fancy cameras. Wow. It is a little, and mine didn't shut off. So, you know, what the hell? I don't know what? what's going on. So sometimes it decides to shut off. Sometimes it doesn't. So you're what? I, 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 I thought we figured out it was like the battery issue or something. We did. He just doesn't okay. want to believe it. Mm. Well, but I, it, it's I don't have a clue. Charged every about. time That's before I start. Oh, the camera. Okay. Off. Yeah, it cuts off for um, like 40 minutes. Or you something. should take a course on how to do that. Thanks, man. By Tim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, no, Dan Henry's coming out with the video course. Is that um okay, so what's the best what's the best thing you guys have like paid for and learned? Like in? the no, the uh like a book, a course, something. Like what's the most useful thing that you paid for? I, I'm gonna give a shout out and I've done it before to Troy Dean, and this was like Oh geez, eight, eight, seven, eight years ago, and I, I, I took a course by uh, Troy Dean on, um, you know, client acquisition and kind of the the business process behind web design. Uh, we we still incorporate, uh, you know, some of his methods and contracts and stuff like that to this day, and that that to me was a huge like you know knowledge bomb, and I'm still implementing stuff like that, you know, for, or from that course to this day. So. That's the, that's the, I, I bought WP Elevation. That's what I haven't finished yet. <laughs> you, you have to say it with an Australian accent. Go elevate. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they end everything. Yeah. Yeah. Troy's an awesome guy too. Really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is. David, what about you? Tim. Oh, what about yeah, you, Steph? What about I, I, I have to I'm say, still a, thinking. A, SJ wrote Divi Space subscription and I'll, I'll agree with that one. That was my <laughs> purchase. Um, uh, that's a good question. I think, um, whew, you're talking about formal education, something like that, where I've benefited as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, um, life experience. That's a good question. I'm going to circle back to me, circle back okay. to me. I have a couple in my mind. Tim's, Tim, Tim, how about Tim you? it looks like Tim's he's ready to fire. He's, ready to fire. Uh, he's gonna hold something up. Do we have a visual aid coming? Oh, I thought you were gonna pick up a book or something. Uh, 
No, I just fidget, fidget spinner. Oh, okay. That's, that's all I got. Um, <laughs> you I would it. say ah, that's hard. Um, oh, oh I know we... what mine is. I know what mine is. Here we go. Nancy says it's the school of hard knocks. I haven't read it yet, but I hear it's really good. Did you just order it when uh, Josh mentioned it? And then... Wait, how would I have drone, my hand if that were true? <laughs> a drone dropped it off? <laughs> no, no. Um, Bezos is on fire. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah, no, I've, I've purchased a, a, a few different courses, marketing courses, stuff like that. Um, David and I recently invested quite a big chunk of change in a course to help us with our future courses. And so I think that so will meta. long term, I know so that will long term, I think probably you'll be the best investment, but it's still yeah. kind of in a transition phase. Um, yeah, we're in the very beginnings of implementing it. And I, I kind of agree. I see where it's already going to just really pay for itself big time uh, in the long run. I'm I think sure YouTube what... for me, Steph, I'm going with YouTube. Oh. Okay. It's not yeah. even premium, but it's just the best. You can just learn anything Look, on there. I'm going to tell you, I have, I learned WordPress on YouTube. Yeah. I learned, um, now, you know, formal education and stuff. We have several courses and whatnot. I'm going to go with Tim. I mean, when Tim, tell him how much we paid for the course. I'm saying it, I'm putting it. Is, are you okay with me saying yeah. this, Tim? 5,000. $5,000. We just bought a course for $5,000. So, mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself to improve. We just spent, I mean, Tim and I have been doing courses for a couple of years, and I would say we're pretty successful at it. We've got, mm -hmm. you know, between Corey, Tim, and I, we've probably got, I don't know, I don't know, several thousand students. I don't know exactly. And I'd say we're pretty successful and we just invested $5,000 to help us even more in that arena. Level up, so, level up. Yeah. So yeah, depends on where I, you're at and stuff, I guess. So. I will say one of the worst <laughs> investments I made was college. <laughs> I went to, I went to, I didn't have my path clearly defined, but I, I started off, I took some classes at community <laughs> college where I lived, where I grew up. And then I went to, I thought like, oh, this can't be good, you know? So I went to a, um, like a university. I went to like a four-year school to take some stuff for graphic design is what I wanted to learn at the time. And it was horrible. It was horrible. And I was in debt. I mean, for one semester, I, it wasn't even a super expensive school, but I think it was like 15 grand or something like that for a semester. And I, it took me forever to pay that off. And it was pointless. Like, I, I don't feel like I learned anything. And I, so I think, you know, don't get caught up in like what other people, like what the traditional methods are either. I think we're in such a different world now. And there's, there's something else that, that something Tim had said, I can't remember what it was that it made me think of this, but like to have an attitude, like a mindset of learning, mm -hmm. like a mindset of continuing education, I think is super powerful. And I, I'm, I find it interesting to think about like young people today, which is a really old sounding sentence, but like teenagers and younger kids, like there, there is no such thing as like not knowing how to do something like these kids are on their, you know, like these, these young, my friend's daughters and stuff, like they're doing full makeovers and everything. Cause they just get on YouTube and learn it. You know, it's something that they kind of are interested in. So they just go and they just soak it all up and learn it. Or if you want to learn how to do these freaking backflip things that everybody's doing, or you want to, well, whatever it is, people just go right online and learn it. And it's like, I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that carries forward to when these people then become the business owners and the workers and things like that, that there isn't, there isn't a barrier to education and yeah. to knowledge and to leveling up, which is going to be, it's going to be really cool. Cause that's not, I mean, like the generation that has grown up on this isn't working yet. Like this hasn't been around that, that long that that's been the case. Yeah. Although I, even with me, I said that I, when I started um, like doing web design and stuff, like I, I tried college, two different ones. I tried this, I tried that, whatever. And eventually I was just like, I'm just going to figure it out myself. And the, I always say like the internet teaches you how to do it. It teaches you how to do the internet. So like you can get out there if you're determined enough, you really can get out there even grassroots style and learn some stuff if you're determined enough. Yeah. And, and co corporate Let's... America is, is against that. But if you're looking at the path mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship, like 
you know, I, I personally don't think there's a need for, uh, you know, uh, higher education, like college wise. I've dropped, I dropped out of college twice just cause I despised it. Unless <laughs> you, unless you're going into something that requires a specific I, like medical learning, like a surgeon, uh, an I engineer prefer the surgeons or doctor continue to or... go to college. Yeah. 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 My wife's don't a nurse practitioner. She has a master's on YouTube. degree. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a, a lot of uh, YouTube doctors out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Let's a... do parting thoughts here soon. So, Aww, ahead, Tim, Tim wanted yeah, to I'm, I'm burning up in my office right now. All no, right, go ahead, Tim. Go no, ahead. after three times of being interrupted, it just ruins. Oh it. my goodness! <laughs> um, Say it. I I have a business entrepreneurship degree, and I'll say I've learned like ten times more since I've been out of college just living life and, and having that mindset of learning and that desire and passion to constantly be learning and doing and stuff than I learned, you know, in that short amount of time. And so I don't know if I'm would go as far as to say what Corey said and say that like higher education for most people isn't worth it. I, I don't know if I'm there yet because I think there are things that I did learn and, um, but I'm, I'm close. I'm close to that. I, I, I think in this day and age, like Stephanie was saying, being able to learn online and learn what you want to learn when you want to learn it and, and uh, you know, just getting it done rather than having to like enroll in school and do homework and all that crap. So uh, I'm definitely in that mindset. You can learn any, anything online except for brain surgery. My wife works for a brain surgeon. <laughs> he went to school for a very long time. Definitely That's go to school thing. for that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Come on, Please. Tim. I can operate on some brain, bro. I can find a video of some yeah, brain see, with, There's a comedian that talks about it, Jim Gaffigan. He's know. like, see, people always use the expression like, hey, it's, it's, not, not, it's not brain surgery. surgery. But for brain surgeon, it's always brain surgery. <laughs> they can't. You know, then he it. says, he's like, what is it? It's like, yeah, you, you can't like be like, like, go crash some brains, you know, and, and fix like, them after that. And, it's not yeah. like it's talking yeah. to women. That's what he said. <laughs> their line, yeah. Wait, Jim Gaffigan says that? Yeah, that's that same bit. He's like, oh, gotcha. Not like it's because he's like, what do they say? Right. They did, every, he's like, what do they say? He's like, not like it's talking, talking to women. women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. What's your what's parting your parting thought, thought Blackman? What's your oh thought? man, you mean I get to go first? I'm gonna go sure. with here's my thing. Depending on whatever your learning style is whatever, yeah. however you learn the best, go there to increase your knowledge. So for example, I used YouTube. That's, that works for me. I don't know why watching someone bake a cake is a hell of a lot more valuable to me than reading a recipe on how to bake a cake. For whatever reason, my brain just clicks with it. So if you're a watcher, find ways to learn people that are doing video if you're a reader find things that will help up your game through reading so yeah that's my parting thought i like that i like that or listening you know if you're a listener podcast whatever you know mm -hmm. audio well, anybody else yeah Ta -ta. I, I, i'm gonna say I, I well i i definitely agree with with what david said i think like i mentioned before there's value in putting your your money into like actually investing in yourself and that psychological like you're, you're basically you're you're paying to force yourself to take action in a lot of cases unless you're stephanie i'm just kidding a lot of people don't finish courses <laughs> I know. um so, so there, there's that side of it too you're, you're more likely to actually go and implement and actually do the work and stuff like that when you you put money into it so i'm not saying go and buy mine and david's if business expert course unless you want unless to. you want to unless you want to oh, but i'm just saying unless you want to. i think there is power in buying a paid course because you you, you put some yeah skin in the game no i i totally agree i mean if yeah i'm, I'm 100 percent there I well think yeah like we've said there's different levels of very, leveling very up wise. and i think yeah. that there's, it just depends on the situation, but when it comes to, um, continuing to increase your business, raising your rates, serving your clients better, like I re and even in your personal fulfillment in life, like just to have that, that mindset of learning, I think is hugely important. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah. And a, a lot of that comes from passion. 
Yeah, I'm going to say... Sorry, Corey, we've run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Cut for time, yeah. As I'm like sweating. Um, I'm gonna Why say, are you sweating so much? I don't I, understand. I, I, I don't have air conditioner in my office, and it's like 85 out today. And um, That seems bad for your computer. Well, I, I do have like a, a portable air conditioner, but I got to get up in the crawl space and um, get some of the pieces down, and I haven't done that yet. We went from like, it was like mm. freezing last week, like literally getting down below 32 degrees last week to like, hot this week so um okay what were we talking about i'm just kidding uh i'm, I'm gonna say uh stri strike a balance between like what's like a practical goal-based uh learning um you know course that, that you might take like not, well not course but like a path of action between what's going to help you out where you're currently at and better your situation if you're a web designer and then also between maybe what you're curious or you know somewhat passionate about because you never know where your your curiosity is going to lead you. It might lead you down a different path that you're more successful at and enjoy more than being a web designer. So I, I think to do a little bit of both and not just like take all these like coding courses and, you know, SEO courses and things like that, whatever, you, you know, might be your hobby or curiosity or passion also do that at the same time. So that's, that's my parting thought. Like it. Love it. Like it. Love it. And my, I, my parting party thought part. <laughs> parting party. David's thought. having party thoughts. Uh -huh. like is, party thought. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Dad if jokes. you are interested in up in your game, I'm going to oh, throw here a comes the sales pitch. Out there. Here comes the sales pitch. Well, not really a sales pitch. He's like, now that Josh Ho is on, gone. On, <laughs> now that. Uh, you know, Tim and I's course on WP Gear is the Divi Business Expert course, since this is Divi Chat. Um, we help you take your business to the next level, uh, to six figures of, of learning. And because of COVID-19 and stuff, we brought back our Black Friday discount, which is like something that we don't ever do, but we decided that, off. Ma yeah, maybe, maybe it would help some people in this day and age that may want to learn. How much stuff. does that make it cost? Yeah. 497 instead of 99. Or do they have to scroll the whole page to find out? No, 497. <laughs> but we also put in some really even better pricing options. Um, payment usually payments. our pricing, if somebody, if, if someone wants a payment plan, we scale it up accordingly. Well, we, we made it really, really, really affordable for people and stuff this time. So now, last but not least, we have a Divi beginners course that is going to be launching here super soon and i mean this is we get a lot of people ask us i want to learn how to build with divi there's a ton of youtube and stuff but guess what we got a course coming out wpgears.com pretty soon it's going to be a divi beginners course so look for it um yeah is that it tim did I give us a good enough plug? No, that was that was a good <laughs> plug. I'm going to go ahead and, and throw you guys a bone on your side because you guys have the CSS for Divi course, CSS jQuery course right now. Yeah. Now it's 40% off on, on Divi space as well as the module creator. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're also doing a, um, right, we call it here in the States, a scholarship program, a free course program for people that are, you know, maybe out of work or have their income reduced. And when somebody yeah. does purchase one of those courses or a membership, we're gifting a course also to people. in need. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I, love totally, that. I, I totally forgot we were doing that, but yeah, it's, it's like, it's like um, Tom's yeah. for courses and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I would like to just go on the record and say that I chose this topic today and I don't sell courses. So this was not a yeah. ploy, not a, not a course <laughs> pitching show. Uh, uh, no, but it's useful. Oh, you guys have great courses. People love your courses and Josh's. People freaking love yeah. Josh. Like the people who've taken yeah. your courses yeah. and his all yeah, have done Josh really, really awesome, well. Yeah. 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 So great job, you guys. Yeah, I agree. We're awesome. You are. Josh is awesome. <laughs> guys, I think my monitor just exploded. Oh. From all the I, think, I think you should get the Samsung 49 inch, you know, no, curved monitor sure. or the, the six thousand dollar apple monitor with the no it's not five it's not that. five thousand it's uh it's pretty pretty it's 
I think it's like a thousand. It seems affordable to me, you know. Right, if you're going to get a 49 inch curved okay, monitor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's All a right, TV. everybody. Yeah. All right. Boom. Bye, you guys. Thanks for coming. Facebook and Zoom. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and uh, YouTube. What's it called? And don't forget, rate this podcast.com slash Divi Chat. We got um, mm. really, we had, it was a really exciting week last week. We got zero new reviews. <laughs> Sorry. Where are you at, people? Come on. I'm sorry. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny, Steph. Thank you. Hey, Thank at least you. we didn't get any bad ones, right? I mean, that's that's a fair that's point, yeah. Gross, yeah. Guys, yeah. keep on not leaving bad reviews on that site. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks right. everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll see you all next week.